At some point, patents are important for innovation, right? No. You, no. I mean, what, you blow up the whole patent system? Yeah, absolutely. You positive. don't need it? So everybody and their brother is buying up patents that were worthless in the first place and then using them as leverage. It's gotten so bad now, Alan, that companies are buying patent um, troves or collections to act as nuclear deterrents to other big companies with their own patent collections. <clears throat> so, you know, someone, someone just paid $4.5 billion for a patent of collections just so in the event that Mutually Apple Mutually assured destruction. You come after us, we come we'll after We'll come after you. you, and so nothing happens because that's the way you don't get sued because, the, the, you know, this company knows that the other company is violating one of their patents somewhere, and so they'll return the favor. That's ridiculous. Pretty sure you won't see two people dressed on the same set that way in any interview anytime soon. But that was, of course, Mr. Shark Tank himself, Mark Cuban, uh, talking about how patents need to be blown up. And really, the patent office has been in the news lately. Just this past summer, this show bought you news that paralegals hired by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to handle a backlog of appeals and cases were actually paid more than $5 million to perform no work according to the Commerce Department's Inspector General. According to investigators, some employees at the U.S. Patent Trial and Appeal Board were paid for, quote, other time, which included performing charity work from home, surfing the internet, doing laundry, because that's important, exercising at home and shopping online, the Inspector General reported. Well, now the Patent Office is back in the news. This time it's about patent trolls. What am I talking about? Companies that don't manufacture goods or products, but sue companies that do. Joining me now is Bill Watkins, Jr., a research fellow at the Independent Institute. Mr. Watkins, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to come in. So is Mr. Shark Tank. Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, is he right? I tell you, Mark Cuban is spot on with many issues in the patent system. He's done a great service to the industry. For example, Mark's created uh, the chair at the Electronic Frontier Foundation to get rid of stupid patents. That's the name of it. That's the official name. That is the stupid official patents. name, but he is funded. Um, he's outspoken on it, and he's correct. There's Our patent system is broken. It needs correction. Innovation is stifled, and some reform is definitely needed. Mark is right. Mark, Mark is right, and, and certainly Lisa Rain is right. She is a writer for the Washington Post and has done some great work. Here's one uh, headline that I want to read to you. Patent Office Whistleblower, colon, quote, managers have no idea when their employees are working, and they, they describe accounts about time and attendance fraud by examiners at the U.S. Patent Office. How widespread is this? Just give me a couple of examples of what's going on in these offices. Right. Well, right now, you know, the Patent Office is hugely backlogged. It takes five years, usually, for an application to clear. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. That makes it very difficult on innovators to, if they have a new idea, to get something going quickly. And the way technology moves, mm -hmm. uh, you have to do something quickly or you'll be out of date. About half these examiners work from home. Uh, if they're not working, that only uh, makes the problem doubly worse. You, forget that you make a very good point. You bring up how technology does move along so quickly. And in a week or two weeks, something that was a fresh idea could be obsolete. So okay. you're saying five years it's taking in some of these cases to approve these patents? No, that's the average is five years. Mm -hmm. And think about it with software, how quickly that industry moves. Frankly, a five-year patent term is all you really need for software uh, or it's obsolete. But patent terms are 20 years. So you, if you get your application through, you get a 20-year patent term, and it's only good for a year or two because you've had to wait so long on it. Wow. So we, we see this fraud and we see people not working and all these examples that have been bought up. Has anybody been held accountable? Have anybody been fired? Has, have we seen anything that shows some sort of responsibility by someone in government? Not at this point. Congress is investigating, demanding all the documents and so forth. I think something will come to light, but not as yet. Interesting. Uh, the, the employees, uh, Bill, they recounted how they tried and failed to stop this, according to the Washington Post what they called routine cheating on timesheets, bonuses to examiners who did not do the work rewarded, uh, and it's a culture of management looking the other way. Now, from what I understand, they're meeting their so-called quotas in terms of the number of patents that they approve or at least process. Uh, so they're not showing up for work because people are saying, well, they're, they're doing their job. We really don't care if they're here as long as they're getting to a certain quota, kind of like a sales guy trying to get to a quota. What, what's wrong with this picture? No, you're absolutely right. They're inloading. 
Uh, at the end of the quarter is when you see most of their applications processed and they're doing the work rather than throughout the quarter. And you know, how could they be gauged just on moving applications? That's easy to rubber stamp a patent application that should never be approved. They should be judged on the quality of their patent examination and the quality of work um, that they put out, but they're not. It's just a numbers game. Interesting. Uh, we, same article, Washington Post, an exasperated supervisor complained of feeling toothless. He says, quote, I cannot make them work if there are no consequences if they do not work. Uh, the quote finishes that they are able to get away with so much and still get good ratings. As a government employee, I no longer can sit by and watch this problem get any worse. How do we solve this bill? Well, there has to be accountability for these employees. One, rather than uh, VP inning into work, they need to be held accountable where, like most government employees, they use a government computer and the government supervisors can review exactly what they're doing rather than this idea that you don't turn over computer records to judge an employee's performance or the hours they're working. Uh, the unions have negotiated that and it's very favorable to the patent examiners, but that has to stop. They should be held accountable just like everyone else in business. Interesting. And I don't think people realize that the Commerce Department, you know, they issued a stern email about this. You know how many employees work there? 47,000. This just isn't one office and a couple of people slacking off. I mean, th this, is, this is a widespread problem and we hear so much about government waste and, and government debt and how we can run things better. And, and this is going on right underneath our nose. Well, not anymore. The Washington Post is talking about it. You're talking about it as well. Tell me more a little bit about your book. It's called Patent Trolls, Predatory litigation and the smothering of innovation. You almost had a rhyme there, but it, that, that rolls right off the tongue. Tell us what we could expect if we buy that book, which I'm going to, by the way. Well, you can expect a study on the problem of trolling that Mark Cuban mentioned in the opening segment. You've got entities holding large numbers of patents, not to make anything, not to have a new process to invent, but to sue. It's a litigation game. It's a racket. It's a shakedown. So, they're, so somebody's coming up with an idea and hoping that somebody comes up with an idea that actually works because of the quality that you talked about before the patents. So then when that idea does come to fruition from a larger entity or one that is more organized, then that person go back and say, hey, you stole my idea? Is that basically the gist That's of it? right. They can sue on that or they go to bankruptcy auctions, get old, outdated patents and sue anyway, just claiming there's some tangential relation between the old patent and the new process that's out there. Patent litigation, it costs over a million dollars to take a case to trial. Um, yeah, who can defend that? Right. Uh, you know, I, I always look at Britain. I, I, I love the Brits. I'm Irish, but I, I love the Brits. And what they do over there in terms of litigation is that if you sue somebody, and this is a general analysis or at least perspective that I'm giving you, but if you sue somebody in Britain and you get it wrong, in other words, your lawsuit is just tossed aside, you then pay the legal fees of the person that you sued, and they have a lot less a lot less frivolous lawsuits of people just saying, hey, you did something, you stole this idea, because, boy, there's consequences that are involved. And I think in this country, you could sue somebody, you could get it wrong, they could say, that's a nonsensical lawsuit, we're going to just throw it out. Meanwhile, it costs the person that you're suing money. Maybe it didn't cost you money, because you could have a lawyer who's just going to do a pro bono, and there are no consequences. I mean, wh what do you think about that? Now, yeah, the Patent Act actually has a fee-shifting provision that's not been as widely used as it should be against the trolls, the Supreme Court back in the spring decide a couple of decisions where they have encouraged the lower courts to apply uh, that exceptional circumstances provision to more cases. So hopefully we'll see trolls getting hit with legal fees and perhaps that will tame them a little bit. Perhaps, perhaps. So moving forward, you know, in terms of you say, okay, there needs to be accountability. People need to be fired. Just give me a, a 15 second prediction. Will this be solved or we're going to hear more cases of erroneous time cards and, and will the quality ever improve with these patents? Will Mark Cuban and guys like you, are you able to make an impact eventually? I think if Mark Cuban with what he's done, patent trolls, the book, if people will just take notice to how important patents are and innovation is to our economy, they will have to hold these people accountable, get these patent examiners to work a full docket based on quality, not on numbers, so we can see our inventors get the patents they need, good patents, not junk patents, and move forward that way. Well, we appreciate you coming here, Bill, and certainly Mark Cuban is an influential person, no question. Appreciate it again, and thanks for coming into the studio. Thanks so much. Well, everybody, we'll be back with the best of Give Me Five. That's after the break. But first, everyone is going green these days to help the environment. But did you know going green could also help you save some green? For more of the high-efficiency smart thermostats for your home that could help reduce energy costs, here's your Max to Life moment.
When it comes to controlling the comfort of your home, everybody has different requests. Nowadays, a thermostat can be smart enough to know your schedule, your routines, when you come and go, and adjust your every need. But can the comfort be just as efficient as the cost? Well, your smart thermo is set up to save money through HVAC costs, and that could be your temperature, your humidity, anything that involves the HVAC system. The way smart phones and smart thermostats work is they allow the user to control them from anywhere in the country uh, to, to make sure that they're getting the highest level of efficiency with their thermostat. An average household spends nearly $2,200 a year on energy bills, half of which go towards heating and cooling empty and unused spaces. Having a smart thermostat in your home can save time, use less energy, which in turn saves you money. Many companies sell them, so shop around for the one that best suits your needs.